if you uh, said that the nomenclature and the term genocide is not so important to debate here, I think it's important because, uh, you know, uh, it's uh, so important that the diplomatic relations between Turkey and Armenia cannot be made because of that uh, nomenclature debate. And I think you uh, think it's important also because I know that uh, according to what I read in your articles, uh, you, begin, you began to uh, use that term genocide in 1996, is it right? Maybe, yes. So, uh, I'm very curious about uh, the <coughs> reason why you didn't use that term before and what research made you to believe that it was a genocide. And I suggested not uh, interrogating about the nomenclature, but uh, you know, <coughs> everyone, Armenians and Kurds, debate just because of the term genocide sometimes, because the international law will perhaps make very important change in the two countries' relations and Turkey and Armenian sides economically, politically, and socially. So, <coughs> And last comment, uh, not a question, but <coughs> uh, it was uh, Atatürk's word what you used as a shameful act. It can be a, a reason for a prejudgment that Atatürk thought very bad things about the events that Turks made, but it should be also considered that he <coughs> uh, said these words in, a, uh, in an opening uh, that he also said that uh, both sides met shameful acts. It's, an, uh, it's a, it's a uh, very, very <coughs> important absence, I think, not to uh, talk about uh, uh, Armenian shameful acts, also considering why the deportation is also a crime, because if you don't know the war conditions, then you cannot say that is absolutely a crime. Because if there is a if there is a people that kills your own people in the war conditions, that you cannot say this is absolutely a crime. You should, as an objective historian, I think, say here that there were some conditions uh, uh, motivating the government sending these people to somewhere in that country. And then we, as the listeners, can decide this is an absolute crime or not. Thank you. I mean, the, uh, every state has a reason, has a motive. This is true. I mean, what should I say? Uh, without motive, there is no genocide. Without motive, there is no mass killing. Let's say the Ottoman position is correct, that the Armenians organized in eastern provinces very organized, centralized uprising activities, even though the historic fact doesn't prove that. But let ex ex like, like in case of Rwanda, so they, they had their armies uh, and fighting and so on. This can be the motive. The motive, it has nothing to do how we define the Ottoman government's policy towards the Armenians. We would say that because Armenians we are organizing a central planned uprising against the government. The motive of the government was to suppress this uprising. So the genocide as a result of suppressing of the uprising. So we should not say that as two different part of the story. This is a reason for the genocide. I can agree. Okay, let's agree that the reason for the mass killing of the Armenian population in the entire Anatolia was that the Armenian uprising in eastern provinces. So in Turkish discourse, it is the self-defense. In international law, it's a crime. Regarding the Mustafa Kemal's words and the Armenian revenge <coughs> acts, I think in book, you will find a chapter on it, and you will see that I didn't pick up one word from Mustafa Kemal. I made a length chapter and put together almost <coughs> everything that I found out, and even his negative statements towards Armenians 
1920-21 regarding the massacres what were happening 1919-1920. You can find all this information in my book. Atatürk's policy towards massacres of Armenian is very critical, very important, not only in one instance. In maybe five, six, several instances, he openly described this as a crime, and he called Union and Progress Party leaders as murderers in other occasions. I have all these sources in the book. This is, uh, and he was, uh, of course, against the Armenian uh, killings of the Muslim population, 19, 1920s, and you can find the information on that issue also. And I think my book differs from all other books that I really try to put whatever, I mean, it was not my topic, but the revenge act of Armenians against the Muslim population beginning 1918, February, Erzincan, Erzurum, and all other provinces. And I analyzed the period. If you read the Armenian literature, it is openly written that the genocide 1919, 1920, 1915, 1923. This is the general usage of in the terminology. Armenian genocide covers the period of 1915-1923. In my book, I only put 1915-17 because of my approach to that problem. And I analyzed the period of 1919-1921 as a both sides of ethnic cleansing in that region because both parties tried to create their own nation state and they removed and eliminated the others from that region. So it was the analysis in my book, and I'm ready to discuss all this issue. I never intend to cover any mass crimes, because for me, it doesn't matter which ethnic group or which ethnic origin has a group or who acts as perpetrator. Every act against a human group, every act of massacres against that group, for me, is a violation of basic human rights and I try to analyze that. Oh, the genocide. Uh, the genocide, I didn't use at the beginning as a normal Turkish intellectual. I was not sure. I was not sure because of what I read. At the, I started working on that topic in 1990. It is now 27 years old. No, 17 years. Uh, I started 1990s, and because I was not so sure, and another important point for us, for scholars, it is the, the, our analysis or our research doesn't revolve around the question of whether or not it was a genocide. For us, I'm not a legal scholar. For a legal scholar, maybe it's important. A legal scholar must answer the question because he deals with the legal aspect. As an historian, for me, it's an atrocity crimes. Which label, I mean, if you read this uh, genocide definition of some sociologist, for example, uh, uh, Israel Charney's genocide definition, he considers Chernobyl also as a genocide. So we are a little bit loose, uh, uh, pragmatic on that term. We don't look the question of whether or not it was a genocide so closely. It is not our basic concern. Our basic concern is what happened and why it happened. To analyze and to understand an historic event and um, atrocity crimes so that could be possible to prevent it. So I started, the other important aspect for me was the psychological aspect. In Turkey, I was scared. I don't know whether really there could be something against me. Then I never used this term, but at the beginning of the, I used another term, uh, Kırım, which is used in Turkey as a general uh, in the population. It means the slaughter. This is the term that is used among the Kurds, among the Turks, slaughter of the uh, people, slaughter of the people. I used this term, Kırım, and in the introduction I said that I used this term based on the United Nations definition 1948. 